All right, so let's talk a little bit more in detail about how to find uh, these probabilities um, and some of the ones that I actually prepared. All right, so first off, let's say that we were asked, what is the probability that a randomly selected z-score is less than negative 1.13? set up our probability statement. All right, so what probability is it that we're looking for? All right, this one's pretty straightforward. All right, most of these are fairly straightforward uh, when we're just dealing with the Z scores. All right, what is the probability randomly selecting a Z less than negative 1.13? Well, less than, so less Z less than Z less than or equal to negative 1.13. Sorry about that. I think I just had a, a tiny stroke. I uh, just kept repeating things. So probability Z is less than or equal to, as we said, right, uh, negative 1.13. Right. So once again, we can look at this. Right. Less than is pointing to the left. We need the area under the curve to the left of the value we're looking at, just like we did in the last one. Luckily for us, uh, that's the way the chart is set up. So all we have to do is go to our standard normal distribution chart, right? look for negative 1.1 in that first column, right? and then look for 0 0.03 along that top row. So again, find negative 1.1 in the first column. All right, you're going to find the row your your number is in, and then you're going to find 0 0.03 along the top row. That's going to determine your co uh, column. All right, and so that's going to give you a probability of 0 0.1292. All right, so. It's 0.1292 is what we should have found there in that intersection. Let's do another one. Uh, this one we're not going to write the, the statement up there, or we're not we're not going to write the, the question up there. Right, but essentially the same question, we're just going to change the number. Right, what is the probability of randomly selecting a z-score uh, that is less than 2.75? Right, so less than 2.75. So, uh, so here in the notes, all right, obviously I'm saying less than, but writing less than or equal to, again, remember that the probability that X or Z equals exactly one value is zero when we're talking about a continuous random variable. All right, so all of these, whenever we're looking at the, the less than, they're all relatively simple. We just need to find the number on our chart. So here, this time we're looking for 2.7, positive 2.7. So we want to make sure that we're on the positive side of the chart. Don't stay on the negative one or you're going to get the wrong answer. Go on the positive side, find 2.7 in that first column, 0 0.05 in that top row, where that row and column intersect. You're going to find 0 0.9970. Right, and that is going to be your probability. Alright, All right, so that's how we find those uh, probabilities, the probabilities for a less than statement. Now let's uh, look at some other ones. 
All right, so what is the probability of randomly selecting the Z greater than 3.27. So probability Z greater than or uh, 3.27. So once again, let's write out our probability statement. We're still talking about Z. We're talking about these Z scores. So probability that Z is greater than and 3.27, 3.27. All right, so the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 3.27, these also are not that, that difficult, all right? So now looking at our probability statement, we see uh, Z greater than or equal to 3.27. Now, this doesn't quite look like the probability statements that we've seen in the past. And by past, I mean, you know, past 10 minutes or however long it's been. Okay. However, right, so we know that when we're looking at our probability statements, when we're looking at probability X or Z is less than some value, right, less pointed to the left, we wanted the area under the curve to the, the left of the number. But that's not the case here, right? We are looking at greater than, we've got this greater than or equal to symbol, right? And it's pointing to the right. Uh, and that's telling us that we want the area under the curve to the right of our number. So we want this area, right? This blue area right here, um, we want that. Unfortunately, that's not what our chart gives us. Our chart gives us the green area, right? It gives us the area to the left. So we're going to have to do uh, a little bit more work to find these, the answer to these types of probabilities. There are two ways that we can work these problems. We're going to start with the, the one that I, I don't like as much, all right? but this is kind of what you're going to see most often in a textbook. So if you have the textbook, this is probably the way they're going to tell you to approach these problems. And this first approach is working off the assumption, or not the assumption, working off the fact that the area under the curve equals 1. So we're essentially just going to draw up our our distribution once again. Um, with our 3.27, uh, this time I'm going to draw in the area to the right of 3.27 with blue and the area to the left of 3.27 with red. So we can see that this area, right? Actually, let me make this a little bit clear. So this red area uh, 
Alright, so this blue area, this is the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 3.27, and this red area is the probability that Z is less than or equal to 3.27. Alright, so these are exact opposites of one another. So, if they are exact opposites of one another, right, and they, they kind of fill out, right, so they're, or well, let me, let me rephrase that. They're not necessarily, they're not opposites. What they are are complements, right? Whatever is in blue is not in red. Whatever is in red is not in blue. They don't share, uh, they're, they're mutually exclusive and they, they take up kind of the, the whole between them. They, they consume that whole area. All right, so if they are complements, then they have to add up to one, right? The probability that Z is less than or equal to 3.27 plus the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 3.27 have to equal one when added together. So if our chart gives us the probability that Z is less than or equal to 3.27, then we can find the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 3.27 by subtracting the probability that Z is less than or equal to 3.27 from 1. So when we go to 3.27 on our chart, we're going to find 0.9995. So the probability, well, I might, we'll, we'll write this later. So the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 3.27 is equal to 0 0.005. All right, so that's the first option. That's the first way that we can go about solving this problem. Uh, it's a perfectly adequate uh, way to solve it. Uh, however, there is another option. Uh, it's, it's one that I prefer. So with this other option, right? Uh, the first option relied on the fact that the area under the curve equals one and took advantage of the complements rule. Right? Uh, here, right, with the second option, we're gonna take advantage of the second, uh, or excuse me, no, the first, the very first property of the normal distribution. And that's the fact that it's symmetrical. So once again, kind of turning our attention to 3.27. Right, this is the area under the curve, the blue area, that we want to find. We want to find that area under the curve, but it's not what our chart gives us. All right, but we know that our distribution is symmetrical. Right, that if we could fold it in half right, right at the middle, then it should match up perfectly. All right, and if we were to do that, 3.27 would match up perfectly with negative 3.27. And the area to the left of negative 3.27 would be equal to the probability, or, or equal to the area under the curve to the right of 3.27. Right, so here, the probability that Z is less than 
or equal to negative 1.53. So if we were able to remove this area, right, this green area from the blue area, or I guess from, yeah, if we were able to remove this green area from the total, right, that would just leave the blue area, which is what we're looking for. All right, so if we subtract the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 1.53 from the probability that z is less than or equal to 0 0.81, then we would get the area under that curve. So to actually show this mathematically, right? So again, kind of start, just go from our starting point, probability that negative 1.53 is less than or equal to Z, which is less than or equal to 0.81, right? So then we need to take the probability that the higher of the two numbers is less than Z. So in this case, the probability that Z is less than or equal to 0 0.81, right? And then we're going to subtract the probability that Z is less than the other, right? The lower of the two. All right, uh, one thing I want to note is, uh, well, a couple things I want to note. Uh, one is that uh, you want to make sure that your higher number is here. You're going to figure out that you, you, you did something wrong uh, pretty quickly if you get those flipped around because once you go to calculate your probability, if you do everything else right, you're going to end up with a negative probability. Uh, and so hopefully we would notice, hey, I've got a negative probability. That's not a thing I can have. I must have made a mistake, so you can go back and re redo that. Uh, the good news is that if you do swap them around, really all you have to do is you can just do a little arrow thing with the pointers uh, swapping around um, and make and just erase the negative off your calculation, right? Because uh, it's going to be that's going to be the answer, all right? Uh, but if you leave it as negative, it's going to be wrong. All right. Another thing is that a lot of students, right, um, when they when we get to this, they want to make these inequality symbols different. They want one to be greater than, one to be less than, both to be greater than. All right. It is very important that they are both less than, all right? And by very important, I mean kind of important because you're gonna, if, if they're not, you're gonna get the wrong answers, all right? Or at the very least, I'm gonna count uh, some points off or you're not getting the inequalities right, all right? Um, but again, if you don't have them both as less than when you're doing these, you're not gonna get the right answer, you're gonna get the question wrong. All right, but I digress. Uh, so back to the example, so then, once we have that, right, these are both less thans, so we're just finding the number on our chart, right, and that's, that's how we're going to get our probabilities. So uh, for the probability that z is less than or equal to 0 0.81, look for 0 0.8 along that first column, 0 0.01 along the top row, and we're going to find 0 0.7910. And then we're going to do the same thing for negative 1.8. 1.53, so find negative 1.5 along the first column, 0 0.03 along the top row, and we're going to find 0 0.0630. All right, once we take that difference, we're going to find that the probability that z is between negative 1.5 0.53 and 0 0.81 is equal to 0 0.7280. Yeah, I got that right. 0 
so for uh, another example, let's say we're looking for the probability that Z is between 0 0.35 and 1.78. We set up our probability statement and then we're going to begin to calculate. So we want the first term in this, this next thing to be the one that has the higher number, right? So 1.78, right? So we're going to have the probability that Z is less than, and remember for these, it's always going to be less than. So probability Z is less than or greater or equal to 1.78. All right, then we're going to take the lower of the two, put that uh, at the end, right? So probability Z is less than or equal to 0.35. Squeeze that in there a little bit. All right, because these are both less than, right, we're pretty much done with the, the, I mean, really, there's not that much of a hard part on these, right, but uh, we just need to go and find those values. So when we go and we find uh, 1.7 on the first column and 0 0.08 on the top row, uh, that intersects at 0.9625. And where the row that starts with 0.3 and the column that starts with 0.005 intersect, that is going to give us 0.6368. So when we take the difference, we're going to see that the probability that a randomly selected Z would fall between 0.35 and 1.78 is 0.3257. Actually, kind of does have a uh, formula, so I'll, I'll write the generic version. So this is for if you're looking for the probability all right so if you're saying the probability that Z is between ZI and ZJ so just these are your generic Z's all right, we can find that probability by taking the probability Z is less than or equal to ZJ minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to JI. All right, so that's, that's the formula. Now we're going to start looking at standardization. So we've looked at how to find probabilities using our z-scores, but what if we don't have our data in z-scores, right? We, we're not just given z-scores from the very jump. So how could we find probabilities for continuous random variables without just being given those z-scores? Right? The answer to that is standardization. We're going to use the z-score formula, which is... Z equals X minus mu divided by sigma. Now we're going to use this formula on our data. That's going to convert it into Z-scores, and we're going to be able to find probabilities using uh, those. So really, we're not doing much different than what we have been doing. We're just adding one extra step, which is standardizing that variable. So whatever uh, value we have, that is X, so when we're looking at a specific value, the probability that our random variable is greater than 25, is less than uh, 1,000, right? Uh, that, whatever's in that probability statement, that is our x, right? Our mean and our standard deviation will be given to us, uh, at least in, in this class. So let's take a look at how this might work. So again, uh, we're going to be given the mean and the standard deviation. We're going to say that 
well, uh, let's say, so we're looking at monthly power usage, just as a, a framing device. And we'll say that uh, this is measured in kilowatt hours. So for, that's the units if anybody is interested in. Right, and we know that uh, for the past year, the population mean, or just the mean, is 916.12 kilowatt hours. That's the average monthly power usage for this, this data set. And we know that the standard deviation is 220.11. So these are our, this is kind of our starting information. We're going to have to have this kind of information, particularly the mean and the standard deviation before we can do anything else. Now let's say that we want to look at, we're, we're going to do a couple of examples. So for the first one, we want to know what is the probability So what is the probability that uh, a randomly selected household would have uh, power usage, average monthly power, or monthly power usage less than 655? All right, so that's what we're looking at. All right, uh, I'm gonna erase this question just so we have some, some more space and we'll keep the rest of this up here. We're gonna do that a couple of times. All right, so before we actually get to calculating the problems, there's a couple of things I want to point out. All right, one, the variable that we are interested in is monthly power usage. All right, I'm gonna shorten that to monthly usage down here because it's also up here, all right? But that is our X variable. Right, so remember that our, our capital X, our, our big X, that is the variable overall. That's the overall variable. All right, for us, that is monthly usage. All right, so when we're looking right, at this kind of question, right, probability that monthly usage is uh, less than 655, first going to set it up in terms of X, all right? So this is the probability that we're actually asking for X, which equals monthly power usage. So monthly power usage less than or equal to 655. This is what we are most, most interested in, all right? Once again, I'm going to erase real quick and reset. So we're going to put that probability X is less than or equal to 655 up here. Now, we can't actually find the probability as stated, right? Well, we could, but it would take more work. We would have to deal with functions and a bunch of stuff we don't want to, right? It's much, gonna be much easier for us to just use the standard normal distribution. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that 655, and we're gonna, going to uh, find the z-score for it, and then we can use that z-score to find the probability. All right, so you can find the z-score outside just on its own. I like to do it in the probability statement. Uh, it helps remind me that we're going from one variable and now we're looking at the z-score and it's no longer the same, right? Um, also just kind of like the way it looks. All right, so that's, that's the way I do it. You do not have to do it that way. If you calculate your z-score somewhere else, uh, that's fine. The one thing I will know, well, well, we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so here, right, the probability that x is less than or equal to 655 is equal to the probability that z is less than or equal to the standardized version of 655. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and standardize it. So our formula is x minus mu, that's our numerator. So x is gonna come from our probability statement, so 655, that's our x. And then we're gonna subtract from that our mean, right, which is 916.12. Then we're going to divide by our standard deviation, 220.11. Right, normally we'd close that bracket up, but I didn't really give myself enough room. All right, so now we can simplify that a bit. So go ahead and put in, uh, put this into our calculator, 655 minus 916.12 divided by 220.11. And we should get a z-score of negative 1.19. Right, once we have this, now it's just like the probabilities that we've been finding already, right? It's less than. So we're not gonna change anything about this number. We're just gonna look for it on our chart. We're gonna to go to negative 1.1 on the first column, uh, 0 0.09 on the uh, first row where those intersect. We're gonna find the probability, which is 0 0.1170. Right. We could also uh, rewrite this out um, in terms of what we were originally looking for. Because again, what we are interested in is the probability that monthly power usage is less than or equal to 655 kilowatt hours. Uh, we're not actually interested in the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 1.19. Uh, well, we are interested in it only so far as that's how we find the probability we actually wanted. All right, so uh, before we move on to the next example, uh, a couple of things that I want to point out. All right, once we get to this stage, uh, students can start uh, kind of getting confused, start making a couple of mistakes. Uh, there are two mistakes that I, that I see fairly often. Uh, and really, I mean, actually, you know, it's really just the same mistake. It's confusing your probabilities and your z-scores. All right, um, this is one of the reasons that I like to do my z-score, to calculate my z-score in the probability statement. All right, some students will calculate that z-score and then stop. Uh, and, and write that down as the probability. Our z-score is not our probability, it's what we're gonna use to find the probability. All right, there are a couple of ways that you can help prevent yourself from making this mistake. One is do the standardization in the probability statement, right? Um, once you've got that, you know that the number, right, or we should know that the number we calculate based on this should go back into this spot. Right, uh, and so that can help you avoid doing the calculation and then just doing probability z less than or equal to 655 minus 916.12 divided by 220.11 equals negative 1.19. Right, because that is not true. Right, the probability that z is less than or equal to that standardized version is not equal to negative 1.19. Right, that standardized value is negative 1.19. The probability is 0.1170. All right, so, um, uh, so one, uh, I find that a useful way to, to keep track of that so we don't forget. Another way is to uh, just think that most of the time, your probabilities are gonna come directly from the chart without any changes, and you're not gonna be calculating it. So it's not gonna come from your calculator very often. In the cases that it does come from your calculator, you're going to be doing one of those probabilities where X or Z is between two values, right? Um, and at that point, you've already gone to the chart, you've already grabbed those probabilities, so you know their probabilities, right? Um, and, and that shouldn't be a problem, right? Otherwise, if you uh, have a number on your calculator, it's more than like, if and you're doing one of these problems, uh, odds are that it's the actual Z score, right? Another thing is that for us, the table only goes out to four decimal places for the probabilities. So if you've got a 
something on your calculator and it goes out farther than four decimal places, that's going to be a pretty good indication that, that that's a z-score, not a probability. Right. Um, another thing is just to keep in mind those, those properties of probabilities. For instance, uh, the probabilities, or really the big one is that the probabilities have to be between zero and one. All right. um, you can, for uh, probabilities, we can't have negative probabilities, we can't have probabilities that are greater than one. Uh, they have to be in that range uh, between zero and one inclusive to be probabilities. So if you get a number that's negative, or you get a number that's greater than one, uh, that's going to be uh, a hint that either, well, you did something wrong, and more than likely what you did wrong is that you set your z-score as the probability. All right, so uh, we just want to uh, avoid uh, those, those things from happening, All right, um, avoid losing points just because we, we kind of got to that z-score and we forgot there was a, an additional step. All right, so we're going to be using the same information for our final uh, example. And, and I'm just going to go ahead and state the, the probability uh, statement, right, or write it down. So we're looking at, uh, for this one, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1,211. All right, so uh, once again, we need to start by standardizing our, our random variable. All right. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1,211 is equal to the probability that z is greater than or equal to the standardized version, right? And again, here we've got our, our standard um, standardization in my probability statement. Once we have that set up, we can go ahead and calculate our z-score. In this case, we're going to get 1.34. And now it's just uh, one of the probabilities that we've already been looking at, right? That's we're going to use the same method, right? Using that uh, standard normal distribution chart to find this probability. So we look at it and say, well, it's greater than, right? So when we're dealing with greater than, we've got two options. One, we could find the probability that z is less than or equal to 1.34. So that's when we would just go find 1.34 on the chart, take that probability and subtract it from one using that complements rule or use my preferred method which is just knowing the fact that our distribution is symmetrical the probability that z is greater than or equal to 1.34 is also equal to the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 1.34 Right. Uh, either way, and then once it's you know now that we've got less than negative 1.34, we can just go to find negative 1.34 on our chart. We can see that we're going to get a probability of 0 0.0901, and that would complete our problem. All right. So that has uh, that is the end of chapter seven. Uh, I'll see you in chapter 8.